Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5 and today we're going to talk about 5 reasons to use MX Linux. So if you are unaware, MX Linux is a lightweight Linux distro uh, that is uh, based on Debian, but we're not going to dive much more into it than that because eh, that's kind of our first point. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about the top 5 reasons that we might want to use MX Linux. Number one, Debian based. MX Linux is based on Debian, the granddaddy of stable Linux distros. Um, and by saying stable, I realize yes, Arch based things are also very stable as well. It's just that uh, Arch based always rolls out the latest uh, versions of everything. Debian still gets the security patches. It just doesn't necessarily push the latest versions of software. That's literally why I like the Debian branch because I don't want my software changing around on, on me on any uh, regular base uh, period of time. But the advantage of being Debian based rather than, and I'm not contrasting Debian versus Arch, I'm contrasting Debian versus Ubuntu. There is some concern about Ubuntu and the, some of the directions it is it goes and some of the directions that Canonical has gone. And uh, that, is certainly a, uh, that is certainly a concern that some people have. And so having so many distros based on Ubuntu, if Ubuntu goes a little crazy, it could cause some challenges. In fact, I still, uh, I hold back my uh, Ubuntu based distros from the Ubuntu 1804 core simply because I've seen that there's a lot of instability. What it seems like in me talking back and forth to people is that if you have a lot brand newer hardware, the Ubuntu 1804 core seems to work pretty well. If you have older hardware, it seems to not work very well. And so uh, if you, unless you're on the cutting edge, probably hold back from the 1804 branch of Ubuntu. The great thing about MX Linux is it's based on Debian, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and that's gonna come up in some of our next reasons as well. But in the event you are unaware of MX Linux, uh, it is Debian based, it is a very lightweight distro. You can find out more information at mxlinux.org. Number two, it is a very lightweight distro. Uh, very lightweight doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be for older machines. What the lightweight means is you might have something like my writing computer is a very low end Lenovo and it runs, uh, it only has two gigs of RAM. I think it might have a dual core processor in it. I don't remember. Uh, but uh, now I don't run MX on that. I run Peppermint on that, but uh, Peppermint and MX Linux are, are very similar in that they can run on very lightweight hardware. Now other people love running lightweight applications and, and lightweight desktops simply because um, they can get away with uh, utilizing more resources for the applications that they're running. You know, if you're doing a lot of blender heavy stuff or other things that take a lot of system resources, maybe gaming, things like that, you want to have a lighter environment. And so with MX Linux, uh, having this has just been boot, uh, rebooted, it is running on 364 megabytes of data or of RAM, which is not, very much at all. There's a few out there that will go a little bit lower, but what you will find in MX Linux is the lightweight capabilities make this thing very fast, no matter what I'm doing. If I'm running uh, HTOP, if I'm booting up a web browser, uh, loading up files, web browsers are always slow, bad example, uh, but there you go. Um, so we're booting up a web browser, running files, looking through the menus, no matter what you're, no matter what you're doing, um, you're going to have a very snappy reactions with our MX Linux. So number two, it is very lightweight. Number three, onto the older points, MX Linux is one of the distros that still supports 32-bit and 64-bit um, processors. And so this is a big deal because as more and more distros are dropping the 32-bit, it means that the people that are still on 32-bit processors are starting to lose the ability to run more distros. Ubuntu has dropped it. Um, I don't think Linux Mint has. I know Peppermint has not. 
but Ubuntu and several other big distros are starting to drop 32-bit support. You know, that's 10, 15, 20-year-old computers. Why do we care? Well, it turns out that a lot of people that aren't in the Western cultures are still running 32-bit versions of software. And so to have something that is as up-to-date, as modern, as fast, as lightweight, still supporting a 32-bit system, very good option that uh, you can use uh, MX Linux for that. So number three is it still supports 32-bit and 64-bit processors. Number four, this distribution is very easy to configure in some areas that uh, other distros may not be quite as easy. So when we get into our MX Linux, you can actually find MX Tools. Of course, if it's not on your, uh, on your favorites there, you can always just hunt for it, MX Tools in the search menu. This actually gives us a lot of really cool tools that, that I wish more distros would come with something like this. So here we have the ability to create a live USB drive. So of course we do have to enter our uh, password for that. And then what it's going to ask us for is give us the target USB device. I don't have anything plugged in, so I can't show you that. And then you select a ISO image and then you can burn an ISO. There's some versions or some distros come with a, a similar tool, some of them do not. Uh, snapshot, I believe this will create a snapshot of your entire system as an ISO. So that, that means that MX Linux has a very good ability inside of its system to create a snapshot of your entire, entire operating system, in which case you can save this out. This, by the way, is the same way I make snapshots of my, uh, my Open Media Vault, my NAS system. That case, though, I just plug the disk in, I boot the thing down, plug the disk in, make a backup with uh, an ISO backup tool. Very similar process. We're going to get rid of that one. So other things we can do, we can do boot repair. If there is some issue with, uh, with your system not booting up, you can repair your, your boot options. We have uh, various boot options. We can edit our menu. Uh, clean up, I believe this is going to clean up. This is something I really wish this were in other distros as well. You can clean up your thumbnail cache, uh, your basic system cache, logs, your old logs, all logs. You can clear your apt cache, clear your trash, all sorts of options you have in the MX cleanup. Let's get rid of that guy there. If you are running NVIDIA drivers, you can run this tool here to install drivers for your device to get the, the better NVIDIA drivers. Like, why isn't this installed by default? It simply is because NVIDIA drivers are not open source. And so most distros, the, the better distros are going to give us the option to install them uh, but very rarely would they install them for you. Things like Linux Mint will have an option to boot into a version which has these installed if you're having issues getting there. We can install our codecs over here. Again, codecs, very much like NVIDIA drivers, are not always open source items, so it really is up to you to determine are you allowed to run them, can you run them, things like that. But we very quickly have the ability to install our codecs right there from the screen. Hopefully this doesn't take a lot longer. All right, so it downloaded and installed the codex. Woohoo, very good. Conky, this is the uh, this guy over here on the screen, which gives us our, our date, our memory usage, and CPU usage, things like that. That is Conky. You can make adjustments with that. Network assistant, sound tools, tweaks. This is the welcome screen that when you first boot into the system, it will show you this welcome screen. It has access to the user manual, wikis, various tools, etc. And let's see, system locales, here's GPG keys, uh, package installer, our repo manager. So all sorts of settings and configurations can be very easily set from this one application window inside of MX Linux. And number five, MX Linux now supports encryption. I know you're saying, whoa, 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 I use MX Linux, it does not support encryption. Well, as of 18, yes, it does. They have supported entire uh, disk encryption is now supported on the installer. I ran through the installer, did see it. I did not test it. This is so critically important because I am now recommending that any computer that utilizes personal information 
make sure that that data is encrypted. So like this computer here, I run my production on, I don't bother encrypting it. There's literally no, no personally identifiable information on this. Someone steals a drive, steals a computer, access it. There's really no information. So I don't bother encrypting this one. The other drive in this computer, however, is my backup computer with all of my personal files. That bad boy is encrypted something fierce. And so I'm highly recommending encrypting it. So having Linux distros that support encryption out of the box, this is a very big important thing. So this supports the Lux encryption, which is kind of the default way to encrypt things on Linux, and it will encrypt the root, the home, and the swap partitions. So in other words, a basic uh, full disk encryption. Uh, is supported through this system now. So those are my top five reasons for using MX Linux. What are your top five reasons? Let us know in the comments down below. I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.